just a closer walk with me.
sister and brother nowhere around. Friends done turn their back on you. But if I can just have a closer walk, I'll be all right. Amen. Because we know weeping may endure for a night. But how many know that joy is going to come in the morning? Amen. Amen. And we give honor to that awesome God. That no matter what we go through, right. he rocks us. All right. Amen, doesn't he? Yes, Amen to Reverend Chisholm. Amen to the deacon staff. All right. To the choir that had just sung so beautifully here this morning. Well, Amen. Maestro done beat the black off the keys over there. <laughs> Amen. We're going to have to paint them back on. <laughs> Amen. All of my father's children. Here in the Morning Star family and on the web. Uh-huh. So glad to see all of your faces here today. Amen. Amen. Reverend Chisholm told me his son is here. Amen. Glad to have you with us. Amen. Glad to have all of you here today. Amen. Amen. These babies got up here and Malcolm tried to mess up our mascara. Uh-huh. <laughs> Amen. But when you have a love, yes, sir. Well. it ain't no harm in crime. Amen. Me and Pope, we say we supposed to be tough. Mm-hmm. Amen. But the older I get, the more I let them water work flow. Right. Amen. I ain't, I ain't trying to hold it in. Amen. They told, they told Doc down there that you, she was crazy. They say the same thing about me. The blessing about being crazy is that you had to have a mind to lose before. <laughs> Amen. So you can call me crazy all you want to. There's a blessing in being crazy. But guess what? I'm screwed on the right boat. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. I know time is spent. Amen. But y'all give me a few minutes. I'm not, I didn't walk out on you. Don't walk out on me. Matter of fact, you're going to have to wait to get in that place anyway because uh, it's going to be a line at whatever place you go to. So I'm going to save you to wait so when you get there, you can walk right on in. Amen. Amen. Turn with us. Us, you may be seated. Turn with us to Psalms 127. Psalms 127. We'll be coming from the King James Version of God's Holy Writing. If you have another translation, that'll be quite all right. We're going to wind up on the same road. Because it is the word of God. Got one of my, my, my friends here to stay right across the street over here. He told me he was coming and he's here. Amen. amen and we thank God for him. Right. Amen. Amen. He, I think he's a member of Oak Grove Baptist Church. Reverend, Reverend uh, what's that preacher? Matter if I know his name. Oh, I forgot it. Just that fast. Yeah. Reverend Campbell. That's it. That's it. The if he's looking at this thing, forgive me. <laughs> we're, he's a member over there, but we're glad to have him with us today. Amen. amen. Psalms 127. If you have it, say amen. amen. If not, say wait a minute. Amen. And it reads like this. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh not in vain, but in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrow. For so he giveth his beloved sleep. Lo, children are an inheritance of the Lord, and the fruit of the wound is his reward. As arrows, he is the hand, in, uh, in, in, and, and arrows are in the hands of a mighty man. So are children of the youth. Happy is the man that has his quills filled with them. They shall not be ashamed but they shall speak with, to the enemy in the gates. May God have a blessing to the reading of his awesome word. 
on this Mother's Day, I got a full package. And I want to talk with you with the aid of the Holy Spirit from the thought, the foundation for a successful family. The foundation for a successful family. On this Lord's Day, I, on this Mother's Day, I would like to take my hat off to a couple of people. Firstly, to mothers. Those mothers that have been abandoned, those who have been abandoned by all kinds of addictions, even those who lost their spouse in death. In that, I can say Happy Mother's Day to some fathers. Because there are some that take care of their responsibility whether the woman walks out or not. Amen. Amen. There are those who have taken care when the responsibility has dropped in their lap. And they're still fathers. Amen. Take our hats off to those couples that no matter what they go through, and life can be hard sometimes. Amen. Life can chew you up and spit you out. Amen. But they stay together love one another to show their sons and daughters what it is to be a family. We also want to take our hats off to grandmama and, and granddaddy. Right. Amen. There are some times when mama and daddy has been taken away. When mama and daddy has walked out. When mama and daddy have too much on their plate. Well. And grandmama and granddaddy step in. Amen, amen, amen. We take our hats off to you. Amen. You didn't have to do it. Amen. You could be like the, the 2014 grandparents. Say, I'm too young to babysit. I got to get my party on. Yeah, I got to live my life. I've been, I've, I've been up under you and taking care of you all my life. It's time for me to have my time. That could be true. Amen. But we thank you because there are no longer no big mamas no more. Amen. There's no, there's no mud ears no more. And I ain't talking about the one pulling out their gun. Amen. But Big Mama will do that now. She don't know what Big Mama got in that purse. <laughs> but she take care of not only us, but she also gives advice to us when we need it. And so as we get to looking at this lesson here today, I have a couple of questions. What is necessary? when we look at a solid or successful family. The home, first of all, must be built and protected by the Lord. Don't care how you think you got it all together. Sometimes there are some situations that will shake your foundation. But if we trust in God, God is able to make a way out of no way. If God builds the house, even though other foundations might sink, our God's, his foundation is still standing. Yeah, families are established by God to make homes. Centuries guard cities. But both are futile unless God is in them. Yes, the family without God can never experience the spiritual bond that God brings to a relationship. Yeah, the city without God will crumble from evil and corruption on the inside. Don't take or don't make the mistake of leaving God out of your life. If you do, all of the accomplishments uh, that you have will be futile. Yes, make God the highest priority in your life. Yeah, and let him build your family. Yes, God is 
there should be the cornerstone, the foundation in every family. Right. Scripture tells the Paul said, I can't live, I can't move, I can't have my being unless God is in it. That means, as we get to looking at family, if we go back to Genesis, he tells us that he made Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. Due to a popular demand and being politically, politically correct, well. two mamas aren't a family. Right. Two daddies are not a family. He made Adam and Eve. Not Adam and Eric. Eve and Amanda. <laughs> but Adam and Eve. And if we let God ordain our families, you notice they, they, they're, they're getting rights now to, to adopt families, adopt well, children. Well. And if that child is accustomed to that lifestyle, it's easy for them to go that way. Yeah, they, they, they turn around and they, they'll tell you that, hey, 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 it's, it's the norm. Their spiritual, their spiritual senses have been severed. Say that. Amen. But if we raise them up in the way that they should go, the, 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 the thing that we teach them, they will not depart. They might wind up going out there. But that teaching that you taught them will bring them back. Uh, yeah, yeah. What is needless? Well, what is needless is a breadwinner. Yeah, the breadwinner needs not to burn the candle at both ends uh -huh. and overexert themselves, for God will supply what we need and he will supply us with rest right. yeah God isn't against human effort y'all hard work honors God All right. All right. yeah 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 we live in a society well really that need both parents to work right. Right. amen amen you, you, you work by the sweat of your brow and it seems that though when you got mama and daddy working, you still can't make ends meet. Well. Unless you know that scripture tells you, and most of the folks don't really read scripture, but they'll say that if you don't work, you don't eat. Well. Amen. And if we were applied to this philosophy, it will be a lot of starving folk. A lot of malnutrition. A lot of dead folks from starvation. Because when we look at hard work, God honors that. Now, he made it a mandate for man to work. He said, you're going to work by the sweat of your brow. He didn't, he didn't tell the woman to work. But you'll never hear me say, Sister Max Wayne, stop working. I'm going to congratulate her. I'm going to pat on her back. I'm going to say, baby, okay. have a good day at work. I'll see you when I see you. <laughs> Amen. Thank God that you're able to work. Uh -huh. Amen. 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 Proverbs 31 verses 10 through 29 encourages us all to work. Well. Yeah, we look at this scripture and we think about the Proverbs 31 woman. Yeah, and there are some men that are out there that are looking for that Proverb 31 woman. And I can tell you, you say nine times out of ten, but ten times out of ten, that person is still single. Because that woman doesn't exist. Whoo, hold up. It got quiet in here, didn't it? Amen. When we look at this thing, we thank God that Solomon, one of the wisest men, the human that ever walked to her, yeah, he gave us this Proverb 31 woman. Proverb, he, he was wise, but he had one fatal flaw. Uh -huh. He loved women. There you go. Amen. Can't too much blame him. I love women too. <laughs> Amen. Got my sweet tea over there looking all pretty in that pink. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. And so, right. as we 
Oh, uh, don't start nothing over there. Amen. <laughs> but as we look at this thing, here Solomon had 300 wives. All right. 700 girlfriends. And as y'all see, I can't handle the one I got. All right. So what I need with somebody Yes. Woo! Yeah. And so what he did is that he took some of the best traits of those a thousand women to write the Proverb 31 woman. Yes, but it is no problem about working. But what the problem is is what we do with the work. Yes, sometimes we allow this work uh, to, we'll give the man 8, 10, 12 hours, even more in a day, but then we don't want to give God two hours of our time. We don't want to come in Wednesday night prayer service. We don't want to come to Sunday school. We don't want to come to worship service. And Lord forbid if we say evening service. We don't want to give God the time, but we got to realize who gave us the job. Amen. We got to realize who woke us up this morning so that we can go to our di different places of employment. All right. If God's just stopped doing what he's doing, right. we'll be in some trouble. Right. Yeah, we ought, to be, we, are, we, we, we ought to be able not to neglect our duty by blaming it on our job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of us, we work two and three hours a day. And I remember my daddy used to always say, he said, son, all money ain't good money. And you know, they wouldn't tell you what they really meant. You ask them questions, daddy, what you mean by that? You'll learn after a while. But I want to help you here this morning. That... Some of us are working, and I, I don't, don't get me worried. You, you keep your job. Do what you got to do. Some of us are working two and three jobs to make ends meet. But some of us are working two and three jobs, and it might be because we don't trust in God. When we don't trust in God to fulfill our obligation. We don't trust in God that he's going to take care of us no matter what. We do what we do on our job. We work. We give him our time and give him an honest day's work. But then when we get home, we're too tired to come to church. Come on, preacher. But you want God to supply your every need. Well, well. We'll listen to the television evangelist that, that tells you to name it and claim it. Send me this seed. To me, I'll give you a cloth and a, th and a million dollar prayer. And you'll send your money to that person and say, I'm too tired to go to church, but you won't pay your tithes at your own church. You want God to give you a successful family. We have to put our priorities in place. He turned around, he said, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness and all things will be added. If we trust him for what his words say, we'll realize that he'll make a way out of no way and, and we will be blessed in abundance. Didn't he say in the word that if we, if we go by the word, he'll open up the windows of heaven and pull you out, uh, excuse me, window, just one, and pull you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. Amen. If our God is able to do that, why don't we trust him? Well, well. Oh, don't feel bad. I, I was in that category too. Hey Amen. I'm trying to work for a living, trying to make ends meet, trying to, try to provide for the family. And guess what? This man told me the same thing, and I, I found out to be true. That, listen here, if we spend all of our time trying to work for what we want, we'll miss our family growing up. Amen. Amen. My daddy told me that. He said, son, I'm, I'm sorry. I said, what for, Daddy? He said, I worked all my life. He said, I used to see y'all, y'all were in the, when I left for work, it was dark. Y'all were in the bed. He said, when I came home, it was dark, and you were in the bed. He said, one day I woke up, and y'all were looking me eye to eye. 
I missed your first step, missed your first word. I missed everything in your life, but I said, Daddy, don't apologize. You did what you had to do. Yeah, not one day that I had to spend in jail. Not one day I must tongue out on drugs. Not one day that he had to look through that glass and see me. Amen. But he raised all five of us to let us know that we can do it and we can make it. We spend our money because people are pouting in our house. Well, well. Oh, can we talk this morning? Oh, y'all looking at me. I must be hitting home somewhere. Yeah. We spend our, our money on things that we want, not things that we need. Well, Amen. Well. We don't have money to pay our tithe. We don't have money to give to God. We don't have money to even give to our families because we are working on things that we really don't need. Yeah, I want to watch the NBA Finals. Playoffs are going on right now. I want to. I got to get me that seventy-two inch. And I can't. I can't. I can't afford a nineteen inch. But I want that seventy-two. And so I'm gonna cook, borrow, steal if I have to. Oh, don't look at me now. That's just a statement. I ain't going. I love my freedom. Amen. But you'll get those things that you don't need. Your, your, your neighbor got a brand new vehicle and you won't run out there and try to get you one. You got the rims on that thing called more than a vehicle. You going broke trying to keep up with the Joneses. In three months, they got it all over again. Sold, it, sold your ribs and everything else to somebody else. Right. Mm. Well. Our children. Amen. Spending money on them. Hey Amen. I remember a woman told me one time, you know, she said, she said, you ought to, I don't know which one of them sons she was pregnant with. It might have been Juwan. Not by being A.G. about it. But she turned around and she said, you ought, to, you ought to wish up the ground she walks on. She took care and carried your child for nine months. I said, yes, ma'am, that's true. But when they came out, I got to take care of them until I die. <laughs> right. Matter of fact, sometime after you die, right. daddy still taking care of them. Right. Amen. And if they're if they playing sports, you always hear them saying, hey, mama. Yeah, they waving at their mama called daddy at the game. <laughs> Somebody going to catch that after a while. Amen. Right. Amen. But we tend to spend money on our children, and, and, and they have gotten so snobbish. Yes, They've gotten so selfish. Yeah, they turn around, and, and man, they, what does a baby got to do with an iPhone? Can't read their name if you wrote it and put it in front of them. Yeah, I know this is a, te a, a technology uh, a base lifestyle now. But the baby got an iPhone 5 and ain't got a job. We got children that stay with us and they want the name brand stuff. They want our apostle. They got to have Jordan. Yeah, they, they got to have the name brand in blue jeans. But just wait till they have to foot that bill they sell. Oh, man. They don't do nothing around the house, Reverend. You, you talking about watching the house. They, they don't do nothing around the house, but they think they got their lip poked out. When you tell them I ain't going to do it because you didn't do your choice. And then because they got their lip poked out, we cave in anyway. Listen here. We ought to live for, hey, my obligation is to keep a roof over your head, clothes on your back, food in your mouth. That's it. I'm taking care of you. Uh, you ain't got no hearsay in, in this matter because I'm paying the bills. 
When you begin to care, I, I remember my Uncle Billy told me some good advice when I was growing up. He told me, he said, when you think you're a man, he said, take all of your daddy and mama bills, every last one of them. And if you can pay them all for a year, you're a man. But if we drop some of these rascals in some of these places, oh, oh, oh man, special places of work, they can't even keep a job a week. They have no, they have no morals. They have no, uh, no, no home training. They, they are not polite anymore. Fast food ain't fast food no more. Take you about almost 30 minutes to get your order right. And that ain't for them to give you the order. Amen. Went to Burger King and, uh, matter of fact, with a McDonald's, excuse me, and got me a Big Mac. When we, me and my, uh, AG got home, we didn't have but one piece of meat. One tomato and a pickle. They ain't talking about no ketchup and mayonnaise. It looked good on the sign, but man, we were sitting down with three pieces of bread and one piece of meat. Then you get to the window and they, you, before you can get your order out, they turn around. Is that out? Is that it? Are you through? Are you finished? Just shut up and let me get my order and I'll tell you when I'm finished. But when you start paying them bills on your own, them Wranglers at Walmart fit just as good as them $100 pans. Yeah, and our apostle ain't on your lips. Jordans, 40 pair of shoes, a 40 dollar pair of shoes look mighty good than them $200 pair of shoes when you are footing the bill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you start footing the bill, then things begin to change. That hour shower cut down to five minutes. Find myself saying some of them saying mom and daddy used to say. Boy, cut them lights off. You ain't back out there. Lord, you ain't paying no bills here. Cut it off. Because I'm footing the bill. Hey, man, they probably getting tickled about hearing that one. Yeah. Amen. But when we begin to worry about the necessities of life, amen, some of us get in trouble with our husband and our wife. Amen. They want something, and then you tell them, baby, I ain't, I ain't got that money. They begin to poke their lips out. Come on. Then you go out there, and you, you know you got to pay that bill next week. Yeah. But you'll go out there, and you'll borrow some money, and now you got two bills. Then you try to get that paid down. She pokes her lips out some more. He pokes his lips out some more. Hey, Amen. Bam, there's another bill. We never get down to taking care of the bills. We want to take care of the wants, but sometimes you got to want to wait. You got to want to wait. Hey, Amen. Hey, Amen. You might want something. Help me pay for it first. Hey Amen. Then we can then we can get some and accumulate some things. Yeah. Amen. Like it got quiet in here. Oh. Amen. Oh. Amen. Yeah. But when we work, I, I'm telling you, that it doesn't give you an excuse to be lazy. Uh-huh. Hey. Amen. We've got to work to show our children, give them good work ethics, yeah. Yeah. so that they can come in and hold up a job. Yeah. Uh-huh. Cause you ain't gonna live at the house all your life. Come on. Amen. Them girls will stay home, but hey, hallelujah. Thank God I ain't got no girls. Amen. When them boys get out, I'm going to say, see you later. You going to miss me? No, because we going to Disney World. Yeah. We love you. God know we do. But we out of here. Amen. Amen. Don't be lazy. We got to balance this man, t- this thing out. Yes. We got to trust God while we work. We got to trust God while we rest. Yeah, we work ourselves to death, and sometimes because we're working ourselves to death, there are some ailments that come upon us due to stress. Stress because we can't keep up with what, what somebody else has got. Stress that we can't buy our children this, that, and the other. If they get everything they want during the year, what is Christmas for? All right. All right. All right. 
Amen. Ain't, no, ain't no need to get them nothing on Christmas. Amen. They get their things all year round. Y'all young folks, don't leave on me because I'm telling you a story. Amen. Just because. Amen. Just because mom and daddy don't have it, be appreciative for them giving you what you got. Amen. Amen. Let's move on a little further. Then, when we look at the necessities and the leadlessness of families, then we can see the fruit of a successful family. What is the fruit of a successful family, Reverend? It's children. Parents will be honored and helped because children are rewards. Amen. Children are rewards, y'all. Amen. Too often, children are seen as liabilities and not assets. Yeah, children are useful and desirable. They're worth having. Yes, the Bible calls children a gift from God, a reward from God. Yes, I know they sometimes get on your nerves. I know sometimes they aggravate you. Amen. But God gives them to you because he got enough favor in you to raise them right. Amen. Amen. Children are a reward. They come from God. Just the other day I heard two white ladies talking, and this white lady asked the other one, she said, how many children do you have? She said, I got six. The other woman said, ooh. I wouldn't want to be in your shoes. But guess what? There are folk in the world that wish they had six children. There are folks in the world that cannot have children that wish that they could have someone that they could love and hug on. Here we are saying, you get on my nerves, you make me sick, you drive me crazy, but you don't realize that they're going to be a blessing to you one day. That's right, that's right, Pastor. Preach. It's time out for us. Even though they get on our nerves, they drive us crazy, we got to we got to stop sometime and tell them we love them. Amen. Amen. Too many times there are children that are going out killing other children, going shooting up people in schools and, in, and, and sometimes in churches and everywhere they go because they have no love in their family. Well, well. Some kids that are at school are envying your child and mine because we got loving parents that take time out with them. That's right. That's right. They're worth having, y'all. They are a reward that comes from God. We need to learn valuable lessons from these inquisitive minds and trusting spirits. They're, they have a mind that they're always ready to learn. They're thirsty to learn. And then they trust in us. We ought to be thirsty to learn. Not only in our spiritual life, but in our physical life. We ought to be able to so thirsty to learn and love one another as God has also loved us. But then you can take the littlest baby in here and they don't have no job. They don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yeah, yeah, but they know that if they cry, mom and daddy is coming to their rescue. Yeah, and so we ought to learn from our babies about our spiritual father that we don't know where our next meal sometime is coming from. We don't know where the next clothes are coming from, but long as we know that Jesus is on our side, we ought to be able to cry out to him, and he will supply. All right. All right. Amen. I know I'm not the only one in here that know that God will supply. Amen. Yeah, sometime late in the midnight hour when Tears run down my face and, and lock around my chin, and I'm trying to figure out how to work it out. God says, hand it to me. It's already done. Yeah, and when you hand it over to him, he has made a way out of no way, and because he's done it, we say hallelujah. Right. Amen. 
when we look at our children. Some view children as a distraction. Well. Others a nuisance. Yes, but we, instead of seeing them in that way, let's look at them as they're about to shape our future. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When we get to looking at the scripture, God views them highly. Yes, no, we, we shouldn't dare treat our children as they being an inconvenience when God says they are the reward. Right. It says, happy is he, a man that has a core full of them. Mm -hmm. If I read it in the MSG Bible, it says, oh, how blessed are the parents with a, quill, with a quill full of children. Yeah, the enemy doesn't stand a chance That's right. against you because you will sweep them right off your doorstep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, children as mothers will go to the ends of the earth for their child. Mm -hmm. Children will go to the ends of the earth for their parents. That's right. Yeah, I know sometimes when you're telling them they can't go here well, or can't go there. Yeah, you can't spend the night over here because I don't know their parents. Amen. When we begin to ask questions and get on your nerve when we say no, guess what? They still got love for you. All right. Yeah, down the road they'll see what mama and daddy were doing, what mama and daddy were talking about, how they were protecting them even when they didn't see the danger. When they get their own children. And Mama prayed that she said, "Ooh Lord, I wish you get fired just like you." And I told her, "I said, guess what? I got three, but I got a remedy. I know how to whoop them." That'll go over there here too. Somebody missed that. Amen. But they never stop building jails. The pharmacist is a billion-dollar industry. Why? Because we fail to raise our children and show them that we love them. Well, well. They lose their mind. They go crazy. They, 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 they envy other kids. Mm -hmm. The enemy wants to steal, kill, and to destroy. All right. But our God said he come that we love them. And, and we ought to become lovers of our own children too. As we look at scripture, we see that Exodus Chapter 20 and verse 12 says this. Children, honor your father and mother. Mm -hmm. Then you will live long, full life in the land that the Lord your God will give you. All right. Yes, this is a, this is a first commandment with promise attached to it. Yeah, but what does it mean to honor parents? It means speaking well of them and politely to them. That's right. Act in a way that shows courtesy and respect. Mm -hmm. Can I stick my pen in there right there? Right. For just a little bit. We live in an age where children have no respect for parents anymore. Not only did I have respect, I, I feared mama and daddy. That's a form of respect. Right. Amen. I knew they would knock me upside my head. Daddy said, I'll take, I brought you in this world, I'll take you out. Yeah, and guess what? Not one day in my life did I ever raise my hand at daddy. Well. Let that sink in a little bit. Listen here. If you think you're a man or a woman and raise your hand at your mama and daddy, I hope they beat the hell out you. Mama didn't care about picking up no iron skillet and hitting you and knocking you out and you wake up with grandkids. Amen. Daddy didn't mind balling up his fist and knocking you flat on your behind. If you thought 
that you were going to jump on. Now kids these days beat mama and daddy. My wife come home every day from cool smiles and, and, and tell me about kids that are spitting on their mothers and fathers, uh, uh, slapping and hitting on their parents, cussing their parents, even grandparents out. You know, folks, hey, hey, they don't have no respect no more. Why they don't have no respect? Because they're watching us. We as grown folk, we ain't got no respect for our mama and daddy. We talk to our mama and daddy in a kind of way. Yeah, I'm going to get to that in just a few minutes. Yeah, this, 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 this commandment is not just for children. It's for grown folk too. Amen. Yeah, what it means to respect our parents, to honor our parents, is to follow their teachings and their examples uh, that they put God in us first. Yeah, to honor the parent is to provide for them in times of need, in times of finances. Yeah, and when they get ill, we are able to take care of them. Oh, Lord, I'm going to have to stop right here. Mom and daddy done worked all day life to take care of you. Sometimes your children well. and grandchildren, and you have the audacity to raise your voice at them. Well. You got the audacity to try to milk them dry for everything they got. Well. Stand up on your own two feet. Live your life. That's right. Yeah, they don't raise you. They got you out the house. When they got you out the house, that was it. There ought to be a time when we ought to be able to give back to our mothers and fathers. Yeah, they worked all their life, and then when they get down on they look, I ain't got no money for you. Shame on you. Guess what? If the Lord bless you with children, you got to get old one day. All right. All right. You're going to get to a point. That the way you treat your children and the way you treat your parents, guess what? You'll get treated that same way. Well, what goes around will come around. Do unto others as you will have them to do unto you. I know this ain't no shouting message, but hey, some of y'all ain't going to show up till next Mother's Day. So I got to talk to you here this morning. I'm sick and tired of seeing families Tear apart after mom and daddy gone. I'm sick and tired of mama and daddy doing all they can for you, putting you through school and everything else, and then when they leave here, here you are fighting over something you ain't never worked for. All right, preacher. Hey. All right, preacher. It's time out. You own it now. They don't owe you nothing. They ought to be able to live their life free without you coming handing your hands out. Well, you ain't never bringing nothing. You just like at a family reunion. You got, your, you got them kind of folk that don't bring nothing but a Tupperware dish. They want to take everything they got. They ain't brought nothing. If mama took care of you when you were sick, took care of you when you wasn't feeling good, then we got the audacity to throw them in a home because we don't want to fool around with them. Now, don't get me wrong. I know, I know there are some that have to put their, their parents in a home because they're not able to take care of them the way they should. But they don't stop coming to see about them. There are folks in every common rest home that their children drop them off and they ain't seen them again. Shame on you. Because you might spend the money to keep them in there, but one day those children that you are raising will look at what you're doing and think it's the norm. Well, well. And you may not have hiccups more than one day. And they're going to throw you in a home. Amen. Families are falling apart. 
after mama and daddy gone. They don't speak to each other no more. Well, well. They fussing over the china and how many outfits mama and daddy had and the fur coats and, and, and the cars and the, and the home. And then sometimes they got the audacity to cut off the electricity off, the water off. They, they, they make sure that the, no, none of the siblings can stay. Watch it now. And then your children looking at you and you trying to tell them one thing and they watching how you walk. One day you're going to need family. I got three brothers and a sister. And I love them to death. And I told them, I said, listen here. Heaven forbid that something happened to mom and dad. I don't want us fighting over anything. I don't want us falling apart to where we can't speak to each other. I don't want us to turn our backs on each other and yield down the road, one of my boys bring a girl home and find out it's your child. All right, preacher. You on it. I'm on it. That's it. Because there are some folk that have turned their back on their family and they don't even know they're kinfolk. Girl looking good and, and you thought, yeah, you think you got it, got it going on and popping. She thinks she got it going, going on. She all had a bag of chips and some soda. You get to turn around and start asking and digging down in their history and find out it's your kinfolk. All right. All right. All right. That's it, Pastor. Mm. Can we talk here this morning? Yeah, 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 yeah. We ought to be able to continually show our love to one another. Those are material things. Things that you can accumulate. Mm -hmm. Things that you can purchase. Things that if you talk with your brothers and sisters, you might be able to work out some stuff. All right. All right. But how, I, Lord have mercy, it's the spirit of selfishness that is running through our families and we got it going through our children. Our children think that we owe them something. Don't owe your dad. Like I told you, the roof over your head, food in your mouth, mm -hmm. clothes on your back. Amen. When you get old enough, see you, I'm going to break your plate. <laughs> you can come visit, spend the night for maybe less than a week. I'll give you a week. I'll give you a week. You might, you might have some for me. <laughs> But after that week, you need to go to the house. Amen. I was so ready to get out of the house at 19, boy, when Mama said, get, I got. Had me a car. Had me a, 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 had me a, a car to ride in. I had a job. All I had to do was find me a place, and I found that real quick. Why? Because Daddy taught me how to work. All right. All right. Cooking a different story. Amen. I'm getting better, but Lord, y'all can't eat it right now. <laughs> Might wind up going to, to South Central up here. Amen. Yeah, yeah, when it comes to obeying our parents, it's the main task that we have when we're young. But to honor them continues even beyond their death. Yeah, pass on those godly traits to our children, those godly values. Honor them in the way that we work, in the way that we talk, in the way that we hold on to the morals, the practices that they have taught us in our life. Yeah, sometimes we may think that they are not listening, but we come to find out that if we back up just a little bit, we see that they are listening. Yes, honor our parents for who they are and what they have done. All right. Yes, they've done so much in our life. You know, sometimes these kids, they have the audacity, some of them, not all of them, 
all of them, we got some good kids. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Can't put all of them in the same boat. That's right. Amen. But there are some kids that raise their voice at their parents. Storm out, fuss and cussing. They do everything up under the sun. And then, as I say, when we don't give them what they want, I hate you. There have been kids that have left out that front door storming out, saying that they hated you and never made it back. You ought to be able to love upon your parents even when you get grown. You ought not to have a disrespectful word for them. Sometimes they still bailing us out. They're still taking care of us when we're having hard time. And don't just say, oh, that, think that just because she gave you that money or he gave you that money, oh, that's owed to me. What the hell, oh? <laughs> that's, a, that's a spirit of selfishness, y'all. And guess what? You ought to be trying to pay her for carrying you. Right, Amen. She could have took the pill. Right. Could have went down there and aborted you. But she carried you. Amen. Guess what? Even when that low-down joker walked out. And they can go both ways because there are women that are walking out on men now. Right. Amen. Right. Leaving beautiful children right. without a mama and daddy. Yeah. Amen. Leaving kids on doorsteps. Well, well I'm glad they're leaving them on doorsteps, though, because there are some that's dropping them in dumpsters. That's it. Right. Leaving them in dorm rooms. That's right. Yeah, turn around, leaving them in abandoned car. Right. Leaving them out in the cold. And those children die. Guess how many folk would love to be in your shoes? To have a mama and daddy that love them. But then, look at how many people would love to be in your shoes to have the kids to hug on. Honor your mama and your daddy. Honor them in the way you work. If you don't want nobody to turn around and talk to you crazy, don't you talk to them crazy. Treat them like you got some home training. Well, Amen. If, if you ain't getting no home training at home, go some around somebody that got some home training. Right. Learn from them. Amen. Learn how to hold on to a job more than a week. All right, now. You going in there trying to tell the boss what you going to do. Who hired you? <laughs> they, they, they ain't going to take that too long. Now they, 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 as soon as you say that, say, okay, you can do what you want to do. Take it to the outside. There you is back at home. You, you, you hating washing dishes at the house, but then when you get at that fast food restaurant, where the first place you going to hit? Bussing suds. Amen. So you might as well love bussing suds at the house. Amen. So when you get up there, you can bust suds at the job, keep you some money in your pocket, buy you a vehicle because mom and daddy getting tired of taking you to work. Get you a place to stay so you won't be ashamed to tell your girlfriend that I live with mama. You 40 years old, driving her car, eating her food. My boy turn around and say, mama, you cook real good, but hey, when the time comes, you gone. You better learn how to love your own cooking. <laughs> oh, amen. But honor your parents. If you got them living and you hadn't told them the day that you loved them, don't you stop at the restaurant. Go tell them you love them. That food will still be there when you come back. Tell daddy and mama that you love them and that you appreciate the things that they've done for you. They didn't have to do it. But it was the love that they had for you. From the time you came into the world until the time their eyes shut, they're going to love you regardless. 
We ought to be able to tell them we love them. But I know you, some of you, as the parents are sitting in the common rest home, you, it bothers you when you look into those eyes and where there was love one, at one time. They can't recognize you no more. Well. It bothers you when you look at mama and daddy and they are doing things that they once didn't do. It bothers you to look and see them not able to do for themselves and it just bothers you. But they still mama and daddy. Amen. They built a foundation. So that you will have a successful family. Put God first Amen. in everything that you do. Then find somebody that's willing to help you meet your goals. I ain't talking about that joker that looks so good and oh, that's my boo, and, and he's sitting at the house playing PlayStation and the Xbox, looking at his drawers 24-7. I'm talking about somebody that's going to work. They're going to look good. They're going to try to help you accomplish some things and help you accomplish your dreams too. Amen. Oh, there because she got a Coca-Cola bottle shape now. <laughs> She's still a Coke, even if she a three liter. <laughs> Amen. You still got to, you love her. You ain't got that six pack no more. Amen. You got the Dunlap disease. It Dunlap over your belt. <laughs> we love each other so that our children will have an example to follow. Right. So that when they are alone with their siblings and, and they begin to have children and, and they become uncles and aunts, and they are able to show them that you can make it through it all. all Cause them to where they are able to work, where they're able to provide, where they're able to take care of mom and daddy. Finances. You know, mom and daddy don't work all their life, and we're going to get ready to go here, y'all. Y'all almost about ready for food. But mom and daddy don't work all their life, and sometimes they need some money. Amen. They need a little cash. They might want to go out of town. Well. Turn around and say, Daddy, here a couple of dollars. Give them a couple of big head hundreds. Amen. Yeah. Y'all might not say, oh, man, hey, when they get a job, I'm going to look for some big head hundreds. Yeah. Amen. I'm going to say, hallelujah, son, how you doing? <laughs> Mama might nudge me, but I ain't playing. Yeah. Amen. Give them, let, let them know you love them. Give them a little money on the side. They might need, and man, because I'm telling you, the, 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 uh, the pharmacist is a billion-dollar industry. Right. I was shocked to hear an elderly little woman say one day that she had to choose between eating or getting her medication. That's right. That's right. She got... She has, she told me she had eight children. And she has to make a decision whether or not she's going to eat or buy her medication. Whether she's going to eat or go see the doctor. Give them eight pills and that's over $200. That's a week and a day. $200 a pop. And you got eight kids that ain't trying to give you nothing. I hope that ain't in this house today. But I know I'm preaching this for a reason. Stay on. Stay on. Some of us got to wake our eyes up. Wake up and face reality. Mm -hmm. If you're grown and you're still begging mama, get up and do something. Manage your money right. right. Stop using other folks as being a leech. We teaching our children today to be moochers and beggars. Yeah, not get out there on your own and work, but to go on and ask somebody, hey, I need two, three dollars. You can't even buy a pack of gum. And it's for 25 cents. 
Wake up. If you got siblings and you are sitting there fighting over something that you never, ever worked for, you need to drop your habit today and that selfishness and go to your brothers and your sisters and say, I was wrong, I'm sorry. And if that's you, you need to do it today. What joy mama would have to see you back together. Yeah, but if mama and daddy would come back five years after they're gone, well, you ain't got to be that long. A year after they're gone, they would bust in tears to see how their family came out. Today, I want to wake somebody up here this morning. I know this ain't the Mother's Day sermon you, you wanted to hear. But like I said, I might not see you till next Mother's Day. Christmas or Easter. But what I want to tell you here today is trusting God enough to do what you got to do to love one another. Amen. Children, we ain't got to buy you what you get. That's a privilege. Amen. Your mom and daddy might not tell you, but you're going to get it from Reverend Max Wayne today. Amen. Oh, we don't supposed to preach about that. Oh, who, who going who gonna to preach it? You ain't preaching. You're trying to be their buddy. Well. I ain't here to be your buddy. I'm here to be your daddy. Yeah, I, can, I, I want you to talk to me. I, I want you to bring stuff to me that, that you don't understand. Hey, I'm going to sit down and talk with you, but I ain't your buddy. You can't talk to me any kind of way. You ain't going to say any kind of thing in front of me. You ain't going to turn up your lips, because if you turn up your lips, it might be permanent. All right. All right. Amen. When we get back to the values of what the Bible says, then the jails will stop being built. All right. The drug addict will stop selling drugs. Yeah, the, our children will stop going up outside our head. We stand to go to sleep. I'm going to go to sleep. You can stand up with me if you want to. I will take you out of this world. Oh, y'all acting like I'm the only one. I'm the only one. No. Because I know daddy and them, man, some of the things that mom and daddy beat us with, if they were in jail, they'd be just now up for parole. And I'll still be hollering in the, in the, in the, in the judge ear, don't let them go, don't let them go. We ought to love one another, y'all. If you hadn't told your child today that you love them, tell them that you love them. Let them know that they want no mistake. They came from God. And God blessed me with you so I can bless you with life experiences that you ain't got to bump your head like I did. But that when I tell you what's going on, that you will be able to bypass the ditches. You don't have to fall in the snares of life. But all you got to do is ask me. And I'll give you the answer that God has given me. Doors of the church is open. Maybe there's someone that has heard the word. And you can join this family or any family in this city through baptism, Christian experience, or by left. Why don't you come? know some of y'all about ready to get out the house. You can't wait to get out on your own. Imagine me, we need to be trusting